I hope this video helps. Please check out the playlist, Evidence for Christianity, Evidence for the Bible, End Times, and the Book of Revelation. I'll leave links in the description for all four. Enjoy. So a friend of mine gave me this old school Sony DVD player. It, uh, it's a DVP-SR210P. And it's a it's definitely old school. Uh, it just has the component video. No HDMI. And uh, he said that the videos would stop playing, freeze, and uh, ju or just wouldn't read the disc. So uh, that tells me the laser is probably dirty. But uh, let's power it on and see what it's doing. So I finally got it to fail. You stick a disc in, and it doesn't sound like it's spinning up at all. It sounds like it just keeps looking at the disc. Cannot play this disc. So it, it just kept saying loading. And this thing kept going wink, 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 wink. But it would never spin up the disc. So let's figure out what's going on here. So before I go on plugging it and taking things apart, let's go ahead and open up the tray for the DVD player and then unplug it and just leave it open. And unplugging it now. All right, let's open it up. I've got three screws in the back here. Now the back, you can just <clears throat> pull straight back on to get it off. There we go. So here's what it's doing in real time, so you can see it. So you can just hear it making that sound, but then it never actually picks up the DVD, or starts spinning the DVD, I mean. So let's see if we can manually kick it. There it goes. Alright. So that tells me that the motor's got a problem. Let's take it apart. So you'll see these foam stickers, these these plastic stickers, and uh, some rubber pads down here. I put all that stuff on there to reduce the vibration sound that it made because it made a lot of it. And, uh, let's take these two screws out to remove the drive. And you're going to need to unplug the... Uh, drive from the circuit board here so this just pulls out just wiggle it back and forth and pull then you need to get these wires out from behind that hook there so I'll go ahead and unplug them just pull All right, let's go ahead and take a drive assembly. Push this uh, tray in. Don't have to push it in all the way. Just enough to get it past the front cover. And then lift up on the drive and, and pull back the drive while you lift up on this tab here. There we go. And disconnected it from the front cover. And right there is the drive motor that we're interested in so after taking that drive assembly out look at what we got here got this pile of black powder kind of scattered around 
little piece of copper right there. That motor's shot. That motor burnt up at some point. I don't even know how it worked at all for a little bit. We're going to need to take... That just slides down that way. And this part also slides down. Now you can see that... There we go. Now let's take these screws out. There's our motor, and there's three screws, it looks like, holding that in. Just got to move this around until you get to the screw that holds it, or until you get to the screw hole. So I'm going to disconnect uh, this from the entire drive assembly, so just pull. I want to take this motor out. All right, now it should just slide out this way. So I actually have a motor that'll work that I scrapped out of another CD-ROM uh, and it's got screw holes that line up and everything pretty much the same. Uh, I don't feel like soldering, so today we're just gonna clip these wires and then twist them together and then Put electrical tape around it so get these wires out from behind the that hook the plastic hook and then I'm going to cut them close to the motor so now we need to transfer this over um, the hard thing to do is when you're putting it on the new motor is gapping it correctly I actually found this tool here that has a handle that's the same width for the gap that I need so it's just something that I'm gonna have to test it with to make sure that it's that gap on the new motor so if you have a tool to remove these that's great I don't so just gonna get a flat screwdriver in there and then twist it to pop it out Ugh, man I try not to bend the there we go Try not to bend that disc, but we're past that now. All right, let's uh, try putting it on the new one. See how well that goes. Oh yeah. It uh, went on there easy. Let's see if the gap is correct now. So the other one had a little plastic uh, collar that made the gap seem a little smaller, but this seems perfect. I would say we got it on there good. Let's try out uh, the new motor. We're going to strip these wires back now and then just twist them together with the motor wires and tape them up. So these are the part numbers on the motor that came out if you're curious. And these are the numbers on the motor I have going in.
All right, our motor is wired up. Now I'm just gonna put everything back together the way that I took it out and let's test it. Right, so while it's apart, we should go ahead and clean the laser lens. I got my Q-tip to do it and my isopropyl alcohol here, rubbing alcohol. Also, um, I was not able to get all three screws in. I was only able to get these two, um, no big deal. Then I also put a bead of um, super glue in the middle there in order to try and keep it on the shaft. All right, so take uh, your alcohol and on the Q-tip, scrub that laser lens and then with the other side, dry it off. And then you want to buff it real good because that isopropyl alcohol will leave a film behind if you leave it on there to just dry. So you want to make sure you always buff that stuff off of there. Alright, that should do it. Let's put it back together. Moment of truth. Powering it on. I don't know why I need to use a remote. I can just push the button, eject. Ooh, I saw it spin. So. There it goes. We got a fix. All right, as you can hear, there's a bit of a vibration. That's why I had these rubber pads and and rubber feet and uh, foam and balance all going on. I'm gonna put the case on. Just gonna have to flare it out a bit. Just kind of pull out on it and slide it over the top in order to get it um, this lip around the bottom, and then. Slide it on. All right, that's in. All right, that's on. You want to leave the tray out and then let the DVD player pull the tray in. You don't want to shove the tray in and close it yourself. So let the DVD player do that. Let's test it out. So as soon as I plugged it in, the DVD player pulled the tray inside. All right, everything's back together. Let's just test it and make sure it actually works. All right, plays DVDs, everything's working. All right, it's playing the movie just fine, as you can see in the reflection there. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you want to connect with me, I have a public group on MeWe called Share Your Trade. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And if you want to support my channel, you can join Robinhood through a link that I'll leave in the description. And we'll both get a free stock. So, thanks for watching.